She is the host of Canada Live. She's the one that brings you the real headlines each and every day, not just the opinion mongering like me. Krista Erickson joins us once again from Toronto. Krista, while I was away, you were continuing on this fight to find out more about movie funding in Canada and the fact that so much of of what how they get their funding comes from tax dollars even for Oscar nominated films but you kind of hit a brick wall you hit a brick wall then you asked the viewers and you said help us out what'd you find out from the viewers we did ask the viewers for their help and they certainly uh, did deliver Brian we have been getting the runaround for a good two weeks or so trying to determine just how much public money was sunk into uh, one film in particular but thanks to our viewers thanks to their persistence their calls and emails we have some answers but we only have some Brian and there's still a lot of unanswered questions so the film that we're talking about here is a production called Monsieur Lazar it is nominated in the category for an Oscar in the category of best foreign film and it was produced by a Quebec based film company called Microscope. Here's okay. what we know about the budget for this film now. The film's budget was about three and a half million dollars, 3.7 to be exact. Public financing from both the province of Quebec and from the federal government is about 2.3 million. Add to that federal and provincial tax credits worth about 898k plus private financing totaling four hundred and fifty thousand dollars so that's let's, that's not a whole lot out of that big budget Brian it's about twelve percent of the budget let's drill down a little deeper if we could on this private financing business okay okay it so that four hundred and fifty K is comprised of the following an advance from distributors license fees from broadcasters investments from an unknown private fund and then some level of investment from the film's producers. As I say, that private financing equation there represents about 12% of the total budget as to how much the producers actually put into this film themselves, their own money, we don't know. We can't get the answer. It could be, I don't know, one, two, three percent. Who knows, Brian, but it's fair to say they don't have a lot of skin in the game here and the taxpayer has all the skin in the game. Now, so what happens if um, gets an Oscar nomination, this film makes a profit to the producers? I mean, do they rake up all the money? Do taxpayers get a cut? Do you and I get a residual check here? What happens? Well, that's an excellent question, and you would think that we would get a piece of the action, right? So we went to Telefilm, which is the federal cultural agency that has provided the financing for this film, and they kind of lectured us. They said, you know, you should be clear with your viewers about something, Ms. Erickson. This is not a grant that we have provided to uh, the film's producers. It's an investment, so be upfront with your viewers about that. Okay, fine. Uh, well, just, we'll just, a second, Krista, just yes. a second, Krista, just a second. Politicians call uh, dumping money into whatever project they're doing an investment. I mean, it's always an investment, but do they get the money back? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's code for a grant, right? But Telefilm was insistent on the following point. They said, look, we have a recoupment policy. Um, and this is sort of, you know, an entrenched policy that everybody adheres to very, very strictly. And I said, okay, great. So what does the taxpayer get in terms of a piece of the action? Well, it's all based on a hierarchy of investors. Okay, great. Well, considering the taxpayer is clearly at the top of that hierarchy, what is the percentage of the piece of the action that the taxpayer is going to get should this thing turn a profit? Here's how Telefilm's spokesperson responded to us in writing in an email to that question, if I can even call it a response. It's, okay. from the, it's from the spokesperson, his name is Douglas Chow, and he said, quote, well, in terms of the cut that the taxpayer would get in profits, it depends on each production and the number of players who have equity in the film, but for Monsieur Lozar, if you'd like more details, please contact Microscope, who can speak to the totality of the financial participants. Right, so, of course, we go to the film's producers, Microscope, and say, can we have an interview with you to discuss this issue, to discuss the public financing, the private financing, and for that matter, your nomination for an Oscar? Here's how the film's producers responded through their spokesperson, which, Brian, in all likelihood, you and I are also paying for as well. Yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. Here's the email that she sent me on February 13th. Hi, Krista. Unfortunately, the producers will not be able to give you an interview at this point in time. Belle and bonjourne, Judith. Then another email yesterday came in from Ms. Dubot. 
adding, if you wish to discuss the policies of Telefilm Canada or SODEC, which is the provincial cultural agency, or the general principles of cultural funding in Quebec and Canada, we invite you to contact them directly. So this is what I've been dealing with for the last two weeks, okay? You go to the federal government, you ask some questions, they say, go to the film's producers for answers. You go to the film's producers, and they say, go to the federal government for answers. It is incredibly frustrating. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, like, You're speechless, you... right? Right? Well, here's you another would, question. You would, think, you would think that you would go to the government agency. They're the one handing out our money. They, you think they would be required to put out some information. No, no, talk to the private guys. And the private guys, I, I think, rightly say, no, no, you want to know what Telefilm's doing with us? Talk to Telefilm. I think they have the right answer. I think the people in the wrong here are the guys living off, completely off the public purse, and that's Telefilm. They should be telling us exactly what they put in, exactly what we're getting out, what did we get out of the last 10 big films we got. I'd watch Canadian movies, Chris. I don't know about you. I'd watch Canadian movies if they were presented in a way that was enjoyable to watch. But 30 seconds left. What's your thoughts on that? I've got one more point I have to make. Okay. What happens if the film doesn't make any money, Brian? What about this recruitment policy, right? Well, check this out. This is what the recruitment policy says. Telefilm is seeking a reasonable expectation of recruitment. For productions where Telefilm deems certain budget items to be excessive, like producer's fees, Telefilm requires a recruitment position that ensures that such items do not negatively affect Telefilm's recruitment. Okay, so not to worry, Brian. The federal government has you covered with this recruitment policy. It's going to do its best to get its money back, but there are no guarantees. But then there's that reference to the producer's fees, and I thought, well, this is a curious business. Do the producers still get to take fees out of the budget if the film doesn't make any money? And by the way, what are they paying themselves exactly? So naturally, we asked the producers this question, we asked the government this question, they just blew us off completely, didn't even think to reply to our emails, to respond to that question. So this is what I want to say to your viewers. If you think you have the right to know how much these producers are paying themselves, thanks to your generous support of this film, there are the numbers on your screen to call the production company. Keep the pressure on them, because you know what these folks are counting on, Brian? That some shiny object like Justin Trudeau's latest diatribe or more hypocrisy from CBC executives are going to distract us, and we're just going to let this go. We're not, Brian, because it's not their money. It's ours, and taxpayers deserve better. I think they deserve to know. Krista Erickson, thanks so much. Thank you, Brian.